In today's episode of The Insect Hunter, we're gonna be checking out two of the largest beetles in the Northwestern United States. Are they dangerous? And what kind of weird sounds do they make? Let's find out. Before we jump in, I just want to put a plug for the Discord channel that I'm just barely launching, so you can find instructions right there. So today we're going to be looking at two different species. We're going to be looking at the California root borer beetle, and then we're going to be looking at the ponderous borer beetle. Now these are both types of longhorn beetles, and they get this name from those really long antennae which stretch out really far. So that's a key signature trait of this family of beetles. So both the specimens I'm going to show you guys today were found by some homeowners, and they saw them and they thought they were big and threatening and scary, so they gave them to me to identify and to talk to them about. So the first one we're going to take a look at is this one. This is a California prionis or a California root borer. And this one is going to be the smaller specimen, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take him out of the cage. And uh, this species in particular, when you poke it, it's going to make this funny noise. And he likes to kick his legs back and try to kind of threaten you to make you feel like you shouldn't mess with him. He keeps shaking his legs quite quickly right now. Let's get him onto the table so we can see him a little bit better. All right, here he is right here. I'm not gonna put him in my hand just because I know as soon as I do, he's gonna try and bite me. And he does have quite a bit of speed to him, but when he's irritated, he flicks his legs back and forth. And this one we have named Zigga Zigga because that's the sound he kind of makes, so. There you go, Zigga Zigga. How you doing, boy? Just touch those back legs. That's what he's trying to use to kind of threaten with. Just wants to try and make himself look as big as possible to protect himself from predators. And he just keeps pumping. He's moving back and forth a little bit and moving those legs. So so I took Zigga Zigga and I put him onto my microphone and you can hear the noise here very clearly with the microphone. It's just such a cool, interesting noise for insects. These guys will feed, so they're gonna go um, and find trees that they'll feed on, like grapes, hops, fruit trees, other trees. They're going to go and find a tree that's a good host for them and their babies. After they've mated, they're gonna go underground and girdle those roots. Girdling would mean that they're going to go and chew all of the outside edges of a branch or a root and then that is going to kill off that branch because there's no way for nutrients to flow back and forth because that outside layer of the tree is the part that's alive. Um, so they're going to kill off some roots, they lay their eggs on there, and then their babies are going to be feeding on those roots over time. Could take a few years for them to reach adulthood. So these can be pests of some fruit trees and cause some problems but controlling them is very difficult because you have to trap the adults and try to kill the adults because once they get underground and once they've started chewing off roots, it's pretty hard to kill them. So they're not typically seen as like a major pest that's gonna be killing off a whole orchard or something. If you have more questions about that, let me know in the comments and I'll also put a document in the description of the video to help you uh, learn more about that. So the key way to distinguish this one from the other one I'm about to show you, the ponderous borer. This one has these distinct spines on the pronotum. So these spikes here that are pretty uh, menacing looking, that's what you're looking for, those spines. You gotta, um, this one will have those spines. This one also has antennae that are serrated. So they're saw-like, so they look like little blades. Those are two of the main ways you're gonna know that this is probably a prionis or a California root borer. This one is about 1.75 inches long or about 45 millimeters. Typically the prionis are going to be smaller than the uh, ponderous wood borers, which I'm going to show you in just a second. So now we're going to take a look at the ponderous borer. This one um, is significantly stronger and also significantly, um, significantly much bigger. Grab the back legs. There we go. I've got it by the back legs right now so I can kind of hold it in place, you can see. But on this one, you'll look, you can see on the pronotum it has some spines, but those spines are much smaller. So it's got much smaller spines. 
It's got these very straight antennae. They're not really serrated, so that's a key difference. But uh, just take a look. You can see these tiny little spines there. I might have to just put up an image so we can zoom in on it. But this one is not making that noise like Zigga Zigga. Um, it is not quite as uh, active. It does want to move quite a bit faster, but it's not wanting to. Uh, it's not really wanting to try and scare you with the sound or flick its feet around. This one will actually just. It's just going to try and threaten you by biting at you. So I'll show you. I'm going to poke it right here. I do not recommend handling these by hand just because um, I did get bitten by the California Prionis the other day because I was handling it a little bit haphazardly. Um, so I wouldn't recommend handling them by hand. Get them in a cup or a jar. So definitely use glass or something a bit heavier so it can't get out because they are quite a bit strong. There we go. Now he's climbing. So if you can get them into a mode where they're just wanting to climb and not be attacking, and that's what you want. So I'm trying to just make sure he doesn't confuse me with a predator or something he wants to bite. This guy seems much more chill to me, honestly, than the California root boar. He's just much more chill. Um, he's just not quite as agitated or as uh, hyped up. Right now it's being pretty calm, so I'm just gonna take it and uh, run with it. But anyways, just such a huge, beautiful beetle. This is in the western part of North America, the largest beetle species you're going to find. Um, we don't really have goliath beetles out here. Um, so this is about as big as they get. And this guy is about two and a half inches long or 60 millimeters long. And that's about the maximum size that they will reach. And he's definitely a little bit nervous or something because he's shaking a little bit it would seem. So but he's being really chill right now. He's not too upset. Um, I'm going to move my hand. Looks like he wants to move up on my hand as well. Such a beautiful, huge beetle. I mean, seriously, here in Idaho, where it's very dry and cold, you don't get to see giant beetles like this. I mean, he's just, this is just a beautiful specimen. So here's kind of his uh, predator reaction. He's got pretty decent eyesight. So see, when you poke him, instead of making that noise, he just looks the way, whatever way you're poking him at, and he's ready to bite. So I'm going to poke him over here, and you'll see he's just ready to, he's ready to stick his head that way. So whatever way you poke him, that's where he's going to stick his head. So he can see this finger moving around, and he's like, do not mess with me. And right now I kind of have a little bit of uh, jitters because it's kind of giving me a little bit of uh, adrenaline just because he's just has such a presence. Unlike the other species, this one is actually not really a pest at all. So this one will feed on dead or dying trees. It'll lay its eggs in there, typically in uh, dead or dying roots. Um, the larvae will feed there. Now some of you who have been viewers of the channel for a long time will remember a video I made years ago of a giant larva that we found underground at the roots of a tree. That species was likely this one, the ponderous boar beetle. So, this is a very likely candidate. The main species of tree that it'll feed on is ponderosa pine, which is where it gets its name, ponderous boar beetle. I don't think it's actually like pondering or anything. But yeah, they'll also feed on dead or dying Douglas fir. So these could cause an incidental issue with a tree or something, but most of the time they're just actually serving as a beneficial insect of eating decaying trees. And they're not actually out killing trees, they're just kind of cleaning up the mess from the dead trees, right? He seems like he's much more willing to put up a fight than the other one. The other one always wants to run. This one will sometimes run away, but uh, he's so much bigger and much more impressive that he's just like, hey, I'm not too worried about uh, fighting you. I am big and I'm bad and I'm gonna take you down. All right, folks, that's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed learning about these awesome beetles. I think they're so cool. And before you leave, if you want to join our Discord, which we just recently created, you can send an email to theinsecthunter at gmail.com. Send me an email, you can join our Discord where you can share images of collecting insects or try to get help with insect identification, talk about new videos I'm working on and stuff like that. It's just a fun place where we can chat and talk. And uh, before I wrap up today, I got a letter from a special friend. His name is Logan. And uh, he sent this letter to me, which is awesome. And I'm going to answer his letter on the air just because 
I'm too lazy to write a letter and I'd rather spend more time making a video and editing this. And he says, give me five tips for hunting and preserving insects. Uh, my five tips are look for insects everywhere you go, always have jars with you, always have a net with you, and uh, for preserving insects, uh, make sure you get them in the jar and get some paper towels in there so that they will um, not break on something or get smashed somehow. Uh, a jar is perfect. And then uh, my other tip is uh, give yourself lots of time to pin insects because it takes a long time. So there's my tips for you, Logan. Thanks for the letter again. Make sure that you guys like, uh, subscribe, click the bell for notifications. Let me know in the comments if you have ever seen some of these beetles. If so, tell me what your experience was like seeing them. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next adventure. Thanks for watching.